Hey everyone, welcome back to The Casual Puzzler. My name is Emily, I hope you're doing well. It's been a bit since I've actually done a puzzle on my channel. I've been doing tons of hauls. I feel like in the next few months, it's going to be a huge shift on my channel because I'll have so much free time to do puzzles and I can actually film and set up. And I finally cleaned this room, which was really hindering me doing puzzles. So now I have free time, now I have the space. I'm excited to just get down into to doing puzzles and filming for you. I'm so excited, I hope you are too, and I hope you stick around, subscribe, like, comment, all those fun things. And today we are continuing on our Around the World series. So if you're new to my channel, I have been collecting puzzles from all over the globe, from all different countries, not just puzzles based on a certain country, but from the actual country, different brands from all over. It's been so much fun finding them, receiving them, purchasing them, and doing them. So I originally was just going to jump over to like continental Europe, but I wanted to do a couple little jumps before we got there. So I just felt like Canada to Europe was just a, too far of a span. So we are doing a couple little trips and the first one is to Iceland. So I did find a Icelandic puzzle brand. They are called Nordic Games. I found them from a couple different websites in Iceland. Only the one that I got it from down below because I was able to get I feel like cheaper shipping costs than the other ones that I've seen and they are pretty affordable they were around like 15 to 17 dollars I feel like a lot of them were on sale um so the brand is called Nordic Games and here are the two that I purchased now I only did one on camera for you to see and then I do have this one also which I will say I'm not really loving. Um, it's just not my style and I feel like they have very two distinct styles on their website. They have like cartoonish like this one and then they have a lot of photographs and beautiful photography. Like if you like landscapes or animals, they have some lovely images. It's just not my style. I much prefer more of like an illustration and that's why I got this one. But I do have both. I probably won't do this one for a while just because again it's not quite my style. I heard it's extremely difficult and I can see it being even more challenging based off some of the things that I've figured out with this brand since I've done one so far. It is very well named as Puffins. At least that's what it translates to. Uh, it, I think the Icelandic pronunciation is Fraterkula Arctica. That was not right. Fraterkula. Fraterkula Arctica. I don't know, it's puffins, but as you can see. So the issues I have with this one as an image is I'm just not one who does animal puzzles, but also a lot of the puzzle is out of focus. There's only maybe two out of the dozen puffins that are actually in focus. So I'm sure it's gonna be extremely difficult. There's also only like four colors in this image and it's just like a repetitive, but not at the same time. So I'll do it eventually. But it's not like one on my to-do list at this point. But I did really enjoy this one. And they had a few different ones from this artist. His name is Brian Pickleton. And he is a children's book illustrator. So I am interested to learn more about his books. But I just want to go into the puzzle, try it out. They have a lot of different like troll style imagery on the website. They also have just like maps and pictures and they had a, a decent variety but I don't, I will just say this right off the bat, I just don't see my purchasing many from them in the future just for image purposes. So I am going to go into the puzzle and me doing it. I remember having some difficulty with one of my cameras so I have a couple different shots. When we come back I'll just share with you how I thought of it. So let's just get into it. All right, so here is the box. You can see there is cellophane on here, so let me take that off real quick. All right, hopefully you can see that better. Um, so on the front, a very tradi traditional puzzle box. We have the mother with her three children. We have these rock formations. On the side, it's just going to be a traditional puzzle box. And then on the back, it has a whole bunch of different translations. So I was using the British version over here to get the English translation. Um, and as I mentioned, he is a illustrator of children's books. So that is the puzzle box. Let's just open it up and I can show you the pieces. So inside we just have the puzzle bag. And then here are the puzzle pieces. They do have a really nice thickness to them. They are pretty glossy. 
Um, almost to the point, like, you know, in some brands have like that waxy feel because there's just like a lot of shine to the puzzle. That's what I'm feeling with these ones. Um, and the size of them are just, I feel like a little smaller than the traditional puzzle piece sheet. The coloring looks good and I am excited to do this image. So let's just get into this. general the image is fun I really enjoyed the image it wasn't difficult at all it took me maybe two hours if that um, and I just really enjoyed the image it was very fun the only area of difficulty was this one rock formation here um, there is slight 
differences in color between the two larger rock heads. But this one was f more challenging for me for some reason. Um, nothing impossible, it just was probably the hardest part of the puzzle. As far as piece quality goes, I feel like the piece size was traditional for like maybe a thousand piece puzzle. But I just felt like they were a little bit smaller than what I'm used to. Maybe it's just been a bit since I've done one with that small of pieces, but the pieces were smaller. They had a nice thickness to them though, but I did realize that they are one, just a smidge too glossy for me. Not crazy, crazy like Eboo, but not like a nice satin. So I feel like it has a shine that's a little bit higher on the spectrum for my personal taste. Um, I also noticed that the puzzle pieces, even though on this puzzle I had no issues with putting things in the wrong spot, I could see that being an issue with a puzzle like the Puffins where you may have a lot of areas of similarity. Uh, this one I was able to do, but the fit was not very secure. Um, I didn't really have like that nice snap when you put a puzzle piece in. It's also extremely crumbly, so maybe you can pick up two pieces without it falling apart. Like it's extremely crumbly. So for, again, for this one, I was able to do it with no issues, but there's a lot of stuff happening and I could easily figure it out. Um, they do have just traditional puzzle piece cuts, which I like. Um, I prefer crazy cuts, but I'm glad it's just not twos like other brands. And I do like that it doesn't have a paper backing. So those big two takeaways for me for this brand is one, they don't have the most secure fit. Not crazy, but it's just I could see it being a challenge when you go to more difficult puzzles um, and also they are just a smidge glossy. Other than that the pieces look great. I did really enjoy this image. I just don't see me purchasing much from the brand in the future. It's because again it's just not my normal style. They didn't have too many that I was really into um, and it wasn't like the most magical experience to like pay for the shipping cost to come from Iceland to here, but it was a fun experience. I liked doing it. So that is it for this video. It's very short and sweet since it was a smaller puzzle. The next installment for my Around the World series will be Ireland, which I am so excited for that puzzle. I'm excited for all these international ones, but that one is super fun. It'll probably be a few weeks before I post the next Around the World puzzle, but you'll still be seeing me here on my channel doing other puzzles and other content. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I will see you in the next one.